Hey guys, Krell here from World Boss Squad, and today I want to talk about a cult classic RPG, Final Fantasy VII Remake. Now me, being a long time RPG player, I've been playing RPGs since as long as I can remember. Back in Super Nintendo days, I've played Final Fantasy 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, up to the cult favorite 7, 8, 9, 10, didn't like it, 11, spent too many years of my life on. I played 12, 13, and 14, 14 was good, but wasn't good enough to have me stay. And 15 I played the demo of, um, I'm kinda, I got mixed feelings on that, which I'll talk about in a later video. Chrono Trigger, Secret of Mana, The Witcher, Dragon Age Origins, that's actually one game that I would actually put a little bit above Final Fantasy VII. But the list goes on, you guys get the point, I'm an avid RPG player. But Final Fantasy VII being the topic of this conversation, let's jump right into it. Now the first thing I want to point out, I'm not sure if this is something I should be worried about now, but since it's in the E3 trailer, I'm going to worry about it. These corridors. I'm not really a fan of corridors, because that usually means one thing. That means the game is very linear. But not in all cases, just, it's still something to worry about. Now I give props to them, they do have the slums looking really nice. It looks like you can explore, you can move around, you have some freedom. So we can kind of throw out some linear worries here, but still. Given the quality of RPGs, or rather just games in general lately have been, I don't know, they just haven't been up to par. So when I see stuff like corridors, it, it makes me worry because it makes me wonder how much they cut off. But given the nature of Final Fantasy VII, and that everybody knows, anybody who played Final Fantasy VII knows that you aren't really restricted to anywhere. Especially once you get to the world map, then it's pretty much anyone's game. Almost. Kinda sorta. So let's go ahead and talk about the combat system. The combat system in the video looked amazing. Even though it's an early prototype, the combat system looks great. It's action combat and it's no longer turn-based, which I'm pretty sure it's a good change because I doubt turn-based combat is going to hold anyone's attention these days. That's, that's remnants of a dying age right there. So the combat looks great. I'm not sure if you press attack once, you select the target and it's auto attack from there, or do you have to keep spamming the attack button? I don't know. I know in the menus you see attack, magic item, summons, the basic stuff from Final Fantasy. Also what's pretty cool is you can select which character you want to play as. So that's pretty cool for combat purposes, you know, you don't feel like playing as Cloud no more, let's play as Barret. You don't want to play as Barret, then let's play as Sid or Red 13, you know, whoever's your favorite. Now people are complaining about the voice acting in the trailer, which I think is pretty stupid to complain about right now. It was just a reveal trailer, the voice acting isn't final, it was just for translation purposes, so the people who speak English know what's going on. So. I wouldn't have to worry too much about that. The game probably isn't even coming out until 2017. Around this time, 2017, around May or June, I'm guessing, is when this game's gonna come out next year. So we'll see. Now moving on, let's talk about the limit breaks. The limit breaks look awesome. We've seen um, Braver, I believe, Cross Slash, and uh, Big Shot from Barrett. It all looks fluid, it all looks beautiful, it looks great for early footage. Now one thing I do have concerns about, or rather I just want to know how this is going to work. We all know how summons work in Final Fantasy VII. You go to the summon menu, you pick who you want to summon, and you watch this whole 10, 15, 20 second, or if you have nights of the round, it could be up to like two minutes. That, that was a very long summon to watch. So. How are the summons going to happen in this game? Is it going to be the same? The summon comes out, does what he has to do, and then you're back to combat? Or is the summon going to be something that is a little bit bigger than you and he fights by your side for 15, 20 seconds? You know, how are they going to do this? I personally think that they should keep it original. They should keep it so when you activate a summon, the screen goes dark, the summon does what he has to do to the enemies, and then there's a round of applause. But 
what I don't think should happen in this instance is the enemies shouldn't remain stationary waiting for their heads to be blown off. What I think should happen is it should be different for each summon. If you summon Shiva, maybe Shiva comes out of the ground or whatever, there's, there's all this ice around her and then the enemies are they're petrified, they're staring at her, they're so scared and they, they try to run away and then she freezes them and then she just charges to it and breaks the ice and kills them or something, you know? It should be different for each summon. Or if you summon Ifrit, Ifrit comes out the ground. Oh, you know what? Shiva should come from the sky. Anyways, Ifrit comes out the ground looking like the devil that he is. And these guys, they're just like pissing their pants because they're so scared to look in the demon right in the face. And he just burns them alive, like finishing Mortal Kombat type shit, you know? But I think you guys get the point. Moving on, we're going to start talking about exploration side quests in Final Fantasy VII Remake. This is something I hope that they keep in because games recently have been so straightforward or rather you have these uh, these quest markers that just guide you to the main quest all the time so you feel like you don't really want to stray off the beaten path and you know it kind of ruins everything. So what they need and I mean what they need and this is probably going to disappoint a lot of people if they don't have it in the game is the golden saucer and we all know at one point in the game it's mandatory to go to the golden saucer and you know what's at the golden saucer what's at the golden saucer is golden mini games that place was fun it had all kinds of mini games there you had the basketball you had the submarine game you had the snowboarding game, you had the chokeable breeding and racing, which is something that absolutely 100% needs to make it in, if nothing else. I spent so many hours breeding chocobos and racing them just to beat that asshole with the black chocobo all the time. And when I got my golden chocobo, it was a wrap. So the golden saucer has to have golden mini games. They need to be there. If not, I would be very disappointed. Now moving on, let's talk about how everybody knows you can ride your chocobo on the world map. And depending on what chocobo it is, it has different talents. You have a blue chocobo, you can walk on water. You know, you had the uh, the green chocobo, you could climb the mountains. You had the black, you could do pretty much everything. Same thing with the golden one, you know. But that's just the point I'm trying to get into. You can explore anywhere once you get to the world map. Now, is this something that's going to remain in the game? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if they're going to have it so we can explore anywhere that we want once we get our chocobo or our airship. Like I said, I don't have too much confidence in games these days because the last couple years they've been talking about, talking and talking about how big their games are. And Oh, if you see this in, in the corner, you can go to it. And then once the game launches, you can't do any of that. The game is actually pretty small. So this is, a, this is a worry for me. So I'm hoping that they keep all this exploration in there. Otherwise, it just won't feel the same. It'll be Final Fantasy, but it won't be the same. Now, they have said that it would be episodic. It's going to come in different installments because of the sheer size of the game. Which I, for one, aren't complaining about because back then... The game was on three CDs. Uh, some of you guys don't remember that. Some of you are too young, but we had uh, three CDs. Uh, Final Fantasy VIII had four, I believe. But either way, it was a lot of CDs. So, it's no surprise to me that they have to make it episodic in order to fit everything on there. But it would piss me off if they made it episodic like that. They put it on different CDs and were paying for each new installment and then it's, it's linear or they cut out a lot of mini games or they cut out a lot of side quests you know or they're taking shortcuts here and there you know that would make me a very upset player also going hand in hand with this is the change of story or maybe the shortening of the story in order to fit everything on the disc properly or a hard drive rather <laughs> whatever they decide to do this this is this is not okay I'm pretty sure they're gonna do their best in order to keep everything the way it is because they know they're walking on very thin ice here, okay? Final Fantasy VII, its fans 
it's like a cult it's a cult classic okay they they fuck up one thing just one thing and their reputation is over this is why they've always teased the remake for final fantasy 7 but they never did it this is why they gave us advent children you know this is why they teased that one time i don't know if you guys remember a few years back they teased that they could do it but they're not because they know how thin of ice that they're walking on if they were to screw it up but i hope for their sake and ours that they keep everything 100 percent but uh, that's gonna wrap it up for this video guys. Thank you for watching my Final Fantasy 7 remake video. I really hope they're gonna keep it straight, 100% exactly the same, and everything will be good, you know? But uh, thanks for watching guys. Krella World Boss Squad here. See you next time.